Yo, 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 Yoski. Welcome to episode 30.5 of the Big Belly Pats. We are back <laughs> and live in effect. Uh, this is 30.5. Uh, Daniel, you want to explain why this is 30.5? So, how's it, everyone? How's it going? So, yeah, so 30.5. We, we're we going to label this as episode 30, but the true episode 30 lies within the cell phone uh, and it will remain on the cloud. We might release it as like a fun thing to do, but we we attempted to do the podcast together while we were in Spain and we set up outside in the balcony, but the wind was just giving us too much grief the people outside it was just like okay cool this is not gonna work and i was like you know what riverside has an app has a cell phone app you know we can we can we can try this we can attempt this so we set it up in the car we were driving to katrajina and yeah we set the phone up in the car and drove about 30 40 minutes to katrajina one of the cities here and we recorded in the car and everything we set it up we start recording but obviously we had to put the windows up and as nick had said many times in that little 30 minutes clip it was hot as hot it was very very hot so we had the ac pumping in the car and yeah besides the ac going right by the phone you could barely just hear us so I'll check the quality once I download the video here off Riverside. But um yeah. We we will we are officially recording episode 30, but it's not the true 30. This is this the recorded 30 that hopefully everyone can watch and listen without any interruptions. Yeah, so welcome it was, to episode 30. It was hot. It was hot. It was uh <laughs> Spain was hot. Um, you, you'll hear me as we talk about, hopefully my mic isn't making any crazy noises, uh, but you'll hear me hopefully as we talk this episode, I'll say it a few times. It was hot. It was real hot. Uh, yeah. So we try to do it in the car and it did not go well because we couldn't have the windows down. And so if the windows are up. You gotta have the AC on, otherwise you just you just driving in a hot box. Yeah, so <laughs> but we'll still release it. Let you all be the uh, you know let you all be the judges of that. But this is the official thirty part two, I guess you could say. Yeah, <laughs> with, so, with uh, a better script because so, we were driving and we didn't have much yeah, of it was a better script. Yeah, we. Yeah, we we winged it. We winged it. It was cool though, but we winged it. Um. So yeah. Uh. But moving past that, I am back in the UK. Um. Spent about four or five nights with Daniel and his moms at their at their nice. They got a nice spot in um uh, in mm-hmm. Mercia. You know, you're not in Mercia. Where are you at again? You're right. Yeah, I say you're not in Marcia. Where are you at again? Oh, sorry. There was a slight delay there. There was a slight delay. Um, so we are in a place called Susina. So there's a slight little Susina, delay, but um, yeah. So a city called Susina. Um, it's not really a city. That's a lie. It's a town, a small town, but uh, it's literally in the middle of Marcia and Alicante. Um, It's very close to San Jeve, which is also more of a little bit of a city there. And um, yeah, so it's pretty located in the middle of the outskirts. It's it's pretty barren out here in terms of like being summer and very dry. So it looks like it's a desert. And we are on a resort. So uh, my mom found a house on a resort. A golf. Oh, my goodness gracious me. Bumped everything. Uh, We are on a resort. And yeah. We're on a golf state, so it's quite cool. It's quite nice. It's a, as Nick explained, it's a little 
nice pausey, as we would say. It's a little nice pausey. It's a nice place. And um, yeah, it is hot. It is hot as as we speak. It's I think tomorrow there's another severe heat warning with degrees approaching the 40 degrees Celsius mark in this barren land of Spain. Yeah. But overall, we had a good time. We got some swimming done. We went to the uh mm-hmm. went to the sea, not the bay. Went to the sea, not the bay. <laughs> and uh we got uh Lucy posted on her um her Instagram. She said, I think she tagged you. Yeah, not the bay. If you if let's just let's just explain <laughs> the difference. All right. Before I get <laughs> it it gets it gets taken out of context, all right? Like, uh, I called it murky. The water in the bay was murky, right? <laughs> what I meant by that, it was hot. It, it, was like, it was almost like you were in a hot bath. Okay. It was, felt like it was muggy. There was a lot of reeds. The water was clear. Yes, yes, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie about that. The water was clear to see, but it was still like a muggy type of feeling. It was just the water was so muggy. It was there was no waves. There was no there was no nothing. It was just the bay. It was the bay. And then when you went to the sea, which was literally the other side of the road, you have waves. And yes, the water was less clear, but it was cooler and it had waves and it was so nice. I could spend a lot of time in that water. If you went to the bay, you'd have to be like, Yeah, this feels sticky. I'm getting out. So there is there is a difference. There is a huge difference. And if it, yeah, I'm just putting it out there. It's, it's not, it was, it was Daniel's, uh, opinion. I didn't even get to try the bay. I had to go to the sea. I wasn't allowed to get into the bay. Uh, so, <laughs> but, but it was cool. Uh, it was cool, man. And we had a great time. We played some Frisbee on the beach. Sand, that sand was burning my feet, man. Killing my feet. Yeah, it. I, I saw you struggling there. I was struggling on that sand. I was trying to fight through it. And Dan was like, dig your feet deeper into the sand. And I did that, and it was still hot there. And I was like, yo, I can't. I can't, man. This is killing my feet. I got a little bitch feet. Yeah, I know. It was, but, it um, was pretty hot. Even if you try to dig your feet into the sand to find a cool place, it it was pretty hot. I was a uh, side note about this, and I just thought about this. So on my uh, Facebook, uh, I follow a lot of stuff about uh, uh, Louisville, Kentucky. You know where I'm from, and there was a um, in one of like the Louisville city groups, or whatever. People were having this discussion about. Uh, when people go to the beach or they go to like water parks and people were upset that some women, I'm assuming some adult, uh, adult women or some moms had on like, not like a G string bikini, but like a thong bikini or something that showed some cheek, you know, show some booty cheek, uh, when they would go to like the beach or the, um, water parks and it was very, I didn't jump into the discussion, but it was very heavy because it was, it's coming from an American standpoint, a good, a good Southern American, not to be racist, but a good white Southern American, you women need to cover up at the beach or at the um, at water parks. <laughs> and it was, and I was, as I'm, as I'm reading this, I'm like, and some people are like for it, some people were against it. And what I'm thinking is while I, while I'm reading this is one, there be men who, and I'm not saying I'm like the best built body, but it's a lot of men going to these places that look ten times worse, and no one's bitching about them. And then somebody in the group brought up, um, I'm glad that you know people are here in Kentucky. It's, we're speaking specifically about Kentucky. Um, you know, I'm glad you all don't go abroad because the beaches and the water parks abroad, <laughs> everybody's damn near naked. You know, it's 
everybody's damn near naked, but it's not from a like no one's like really freaking out about it. No kids are like, oh my God, mom, look, boobs. Or no one's really freaking out. It's just it's hot <laughs> in a lot of these places. And it's not and it's not and it's not very sexualized. You know what I mean? It's not very sexualized. Yeah. And it made me think because while we were at the beach in Spain, it threw me for a loop. And granted, my girl was there. I love my girl to death. I wasn't trying to stare off. But, you know, just looking at people. And there was a few women that were topless, you know, at the beach, getting in the water, walking about with some of them walking up and down the beach. And no one was batting an eye. No kids were freaking out, saying anything. No moms, no dads. It was literally just, you know, if you don't sexualize something, it's not a big deal. Adding to the fact there was men out there who had bigger breasts than some of the women out there. You know, so it was just one of those like a good old American thing <laughs> is that we have to sexualize everything. No one can share their bodies, et cetera, et cetera. Plus, Kentucky is part of the Bible Belt. So, you know, Jesus, baby, they love some Jesus in Kentucky. Um, So, yeah, as I'm reading this and I just came back from Spain, I was just like, you know, some people need to not ever leave their city because it's very closeted yeah. uh mindsets and i think we spoke on that before before like we met in china we had a very you're in you're in your bubble but i think even with like me and dave mm -hmm. we were still in our bubble of south africa or the u.s you in your bubble we still kind of had common sense that there's people out there that don't just fit the bill of what we know growing up. But a lot of people, and I'm pretty sure you can attest to this yeah. in South Africa, it's just some people that just need not ever leave where they're from because you're, you're so ingrained into your thinking <laughs> that you just, it's, it's, it's impossible for you to open up your mind and think that other people live different than you and things that you find offensive or whatever. It's okay in 95% of the world, but your 5% bubble is all, you know? Yeah. So that's my, that's my little take. I thought about that when I was reading that little thread and I was like, yeah, someone was like, oh yeah, women going to the, to the water park and they might have on a thong bikini or I went to the beach. It was somebody went to like a river and a woman had like her top off. Wasn't doing anything. She just had her top off, get in the water, whatever. People were freaking out. And I'm just like, Phew. I was like, y'all, y'all wouldn't last a fucking week in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> that's my little take <laughs> fair enough so yeah yeah no um, i think it's i think it was it's a it's a shock at first i think it is i think it's like oh well they they don't have their top one okay and then like if you if you like obviously there are there are naked beaches in south africa that, that you can go to um that are labeled naked beaches so people understand it but I think mm -hmm. like when I was in Mallorca last year and you, and this time on the beach here in La Manga, where we were, when I saw it, I was like, first of all, I was like, oh, oh, okay. And then you just ignore it. Like, I think when I was in Mallorca, right. there was one beach where I went with my mom and my sister. And it was just like, I think it, that beach where we went was 90% of the ladies had their tops off. 90%. And it was it was just that was it. It was it. And it was just all shapes and sizes. And people were just like, okay, cool. You just do, you do. And it wasn't like it was an adult-only beat. There were just tons and tons of kids as well. And it's just that when I've been in and around Spain specifically, the people are very liberal. Not, not, I don't think that's the right word. Should I say that the right word? They just, they just less laissez-faire. Yeah. They just... Um, they don't care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they very much like they're pretty chill. They don't they don't care what's going on. They very much um be free, you know? Be free. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um and I'm gonna say, yeah, I, I, I agree, man. It's but that's why I'm 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 thankful, you know, one of the reasons that we even have this podcast, I'm thankful that we get to travel and see these things, see different parts of the world. See, I told you, that's a big thing for me traveling is I'm just curious to see how the next man lives. I'm curious to see what people live like in mm -hmm. 
like when we was in Spain driving around through the small towns, I was just looking at people going about their daily life, see how they live. So I think that us being blessed to be able to travel to these places, see this, that, and the third, it, like it really, really opens our uh, minds up because and I'm pretty sure you, we know people back home that maybe have been to the next bordering country at best and that's it. And then everything revolves around that world. And now I'm like, it's so much more out there. So yeah, in Spain, I had a great time. I had a great time outside of it was balls hot. Uh, uh, me and Lucy, when we slept, uh, we slept, we had the window open <laughs> fan on. I did not. I think the first night she slept under the blanket. I was like, hell no, I refuse. Um, and the whole time we slept out, we were just like, you know, kiss each other. Good night. I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm not sleeping. I'm not touching you because it's too hot to be skin to skin. <laughs> so yeah. But other than that, man, we had a great time. Uh, ended earlier than I would like for it to be, but we got some more travel plans coming mm -hmm. up. Um, and oh, shout out to yeah, you. Bland Drew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Bland Drew. He is going to meet us in, or meet me and my homie Trent and my homie Nick. Uh, he's going to meet us in, uh, in Paris for the Olympics. So we're going to see some stuff. He got me a Anthony Edwards jersey. So looking forward to uh, linking up. But yeah, I got some trips planned. Uh, mm hmm. The only thing I got left playing is Paris, Lanzarote. Then my dad is coming uh, for a week. And then in between sep pretty much beginning of October and then November, I'm going home for Thanksgiving. And then at Christmas, my mom is coming here. But in the middle of that, we I got to go to London. I haven't been. There's this cool little theme park i don't know if it's like a theme park it's kind of like the best way i can describe it is like a live rpg and it's uh oh that's weird i don't know if i should be looking at this uh it's like a live rpg of i just want to um, i just want to tell the viewers london mm -hmm. i just want to tell the viewers that he just said the only few trips some some people go on like a once a year trip. This guy's been on like six this year, and he's got like six more left. So so just mention the fact that he's only got these trips left. You know, <laughs> he's only going to Paris. He's only going to his other place. He's only going to America. He only has his dad coming, and he only has his mom and sister coming for Christmas. So he's not he's not busy. He's not traveling that much, but he also needs to go to London. So he's got. Yeah, just a little bit of traveling left to do for six months of the flipping year. Some of us are, some of us are literally going back to work for the next six months of the year. Thanks very much. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! You just did Mad Madrid, <laughs> Majorca. Uh, where else did you? You went somewhere else in Spain. Majorca then you're was going to London. Ah. Uh. Okay. Well. <laughs> You do I've stuff. Been to, I've been to Spain. Oh, my God. <laughs> I do stuff compared to you. <laughs> this um, guy. But, yeah. Sorry, this I, I kind of got off track there. Uh, today is, I think, the last day of school for the kids. Um, and there's a bunch of kids. They finished of course, late. We talked about it before. Yeah. But today's the last. I know. I think the other day was the last day of school for the um, for Hallie Ray, uh, Lucy's niece. She had her little. It's called like Leavers thing or something. When, I remember we used to have it where you go to the last day of school, everybody signs your T-shirt or whatever. Uh, so she just did her. She's going to high school uh, next whenever school starts. I think September. Um, but she. Uh, but yeah, just threw me for a loop. Uh, I felt very weird as I just what I just saw across the street. Uh, I'm not going to say it on the podcast. It, it just threw me for a loop. Um, but anyways, yeah, man. So 
caught up, man. Had a great time with Daniel. Sucks that we couldn't get an a, a episode done right there. Like I said, we'll post it. Uh, the audio is not great, but at least you will see what we're talking about. So 30.5 here. Um, but other than that, man, it was good, man. It was hot. Uh, I don't know if I said that before. It was hot. And... Yeah, man, I had a I had a great time, man. I would love to uh, come back to Spain for sure, for sure. Come back to Spain. Um, I do want to give a quick shout out to Corey. Um, we've talked about Corey a fair few times on here. Um, love him to death. That's my cousin. He'll probably be another episode here and there. Um, his grandmother passed uh, just recently on his dad's side. So I'm related to him on his mom's side. Uh, so his grandmother just passed uh, recently. So uh, been talking to him. He's doing all right. But uh, just if anybody listen, if he listens, man, thinking about you, man, uh, if you make prayers or whatever it'd be, just uh, keep him in your thoughts. Cool. Uh, Shout out to Corey. So yeah. uh, um. So about these Euros, uh, we, me, Daniel, Lucy, and Daniel's mom, Miss Marina, we went to watch the Euros in the, the small town of uh, Suchina. My lip looks retarded right here. Ooh. Susina. 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 And uh, we went to go watch it, uh, like the little town. Uh, we sat with the English side because Lucy said we had to. Uh, on camera, my lip looks really retarded right here. Uh, uh, like my lip is drifting. Is that age? Stop is using your camera age? as a mirror, Nick, and focus on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm just saying, man. It just, <laughs> my lip just looked weird. So at home, Nick doesn't look um, in the mirror. So he never looks in the mirror, even though he has a giant mirror in the bathroom. I, he always comes on the podcast I, for those listening, and he looks and he looks and he looks and he looks, and he's trying to find something I, wrong I, while he's talking. On the I podcast. do look in the mirror. I look. I look in the mirror when I'm at home, but I don't sit in the mirror and talk in the mirror. <laughs> Jeez. Anyways, uh-huh. uh, we watched the Euros. <laughs> <laughs> sat with the English side, um, and Spain won. Uh, me and Daniel predicted the correct score in our little group. Uh, both predicted two to one for Spain to win. Shout out to España. Uh, Lucy was not happy about that. Uh, Daniel was because Viva he won España. our super our super tournament. Um, I. As much as I know I'm in England and I love my girl, I was not rooting for England. It was delayed, but it needed to be done for Spain. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, uh, Spain had a good goal in the first. uh, Spain had a good goal. Cole Palmer came and hit a nice beam for England, kind of brought them back half, but uh, Spain wrapped it up, man. But watching that game, even in the beginning, that first half, seeing how much Spain was controlling the ball, I was like, Spain, I I just knew when it was still nil-nil, I was like, Spain's going to win this because they are barely letting England touch this ball. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, shout out to Spain. Spain got the dub. Uh, I would like it was one of those. I, I kind of I wanted England. The only reason I would want England to win is just for my shorty. But outside of that, I was like, I, I just know I'm not going to hear the end of it if England would have won. So, because I'm tired of it's coming home. So, yeah. So, so shout out to Spain. Spain. I've got to, I've got to talk about something that came up. Okay. Spain got the dub. So I want to discuss something about fans. And there was there was an Irish podcast show that was going on. I don't know what the show was called, but if they ever see this, 
Uh, what I do want to say is there was so recently the Irish rugby team played the Springboks in a two game series I, and we drew the series 1 1. The Springboks winning the first game. Yeah, and Ireland won the second game. So during one, drawing 1 1. Now, the second test had a lot of controversy because there were two Irish players involved with uh, an illegal act at a ruck called the Croc Row. Croc, the Croc roll and that is basically like rolling a player over his knees and it's been banned and it's been cited as a possible red card incident now two irish players did this and only one of them got yellow carded and the other one got scotch free but besides that they beat us by one point by a late drop goal after this the whole irish community was like oh yeah we we beat number one we beat number one in the world and then one Irish guy was like, yeah, now you see why South Africans are all obsessed with the Irish. They're like the English football fans. And I'm just thinking to myself, how are South African rugby fans like the English football fans? To be like an English football fan, you can't win. You, you haven't won anything since 1966. The South African rugby team is the most successful World Cup team in history with four World Cups. Outside of the US. We've won four. We've only two teams that have won it back to back. Yeah, yeah. Basically, like, it's in terms of rugby, World Cup, and we are 1910 head to head with Ireland. So the fact of the matter is, is that this guy caught South African fans like Irish fans. Now, yeah, there's always going to be, there's always going to be like hate on social media and everything like that. But South Africans, if we lose, we just go, oh, man, we, we, we're angry for the first 10, 15 minutes of the game. And then the next day, we're done. We're pretty much like, okay, cool, we move on. Like, even our coach said, there's no point of crying about it. But, like, the thing of the matter is, is that you're just sitting there going, all right, you've just compared us. But Ireland, Ireland as a World Cup team, and, and now I could go with the facts, 36 years of rugby never won a World Cup. You've only gone past, you've never gone past the quarterfinals. So that means in rugby terms, you've never won a knockout match. And this World Cup, you were dubbed the favorites and you still didn't make it past the quarterfinals, which New Zealand beat you again. And he just claimed, oh yeah, in the eight years that the Springboks have won two World Cups, they've only beat us once. Okay, that's fine. We still got two World Cups. So you got three wins out of the last eight years because we played three friendlies. So I'm thinking to myself, like, I think you're the English football fan version of rugby and we're just champions. That's all. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> Is that it? Anything else you want to share? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's good, good, good. It's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I seen I seen you posted it on your story or something. I was like, this is going to come up. This is going to come up. But, you know, I, I get it, though. You know, USA rugby is obviously world number one. So it's like it's nice to see everyone else battling out. Don't confuse rugby with American football. No, nothing Nick. to We've say about, that. about this. No. Okay. All right. Delay. There's a slight delay. There's a slight delay. Uh. Okay. Don't worry about it. Move past it. Uh. Yeah. So. Um. Uh. So yeah. The Euros was good. Uh. Looking forward to the World Cup is coming up next. Uh. Outside of like regular league play. Uh, so yeah, um, I know you all have seen, I'm pretty sure it's been blowing up on social media, the NCAA 25 video game. Um, I know mm -hmm. it's been blowing up everywhere. Uh, I don't have it yet, but I will be getting it. Um, I don't have it yet because everybody has been playing it, pre-ordered it. Uh, so they got like three or four, I think four day early access. Uh, I don't pre-order games and I, cause I like to 
see how everybody's playing it, see the gameplay first. Obviously, when you first get a game, there's glitches and all this stuff that they got to update, et cetera, et cetera. And I am trying my hardest to not buy the game online on digital PlayStation. I like to buy disc uh, just to, and I've always been a disc guy just because I want to, if I need to um, uh, help with any storage. And in the event that I want to resell anything, I can do it. You can't really resell anything that's already on your drive. So don't know if it's going to come out physical in the UK, uh, but I'll try to get it delivered or something somehow. Um, but the, I don't know when, when college football wasn't a big thing in South Africa, was it like the game? Not necessarily. No, as an, as a, as a sports game. No, because we got around about the same time we got rugby on EA Sports, which obviously hasn't had a one a great game recently as well. So, I mean, so yeah, compared to compare, I think some people played Madden. There were quite a few people that actually played Madden, so I think it was kind of popular. It was the only access we had to the NFL, basically. Obviously, you're not watching it live, but it wasn't college football. I think the last game was released. It was in in 2020, 2014. The last college game, 2014. Yeah. So I don't think it was back big back then. I think there were just other games that obviously South Africans we were co- we were more interested in. We were there's Madden, there was rugby, there was cricket, and obviously FIFA. FIFA is the most popular in South Africa, I, I think. Right. Yeah. So, uh, and I'm a I'm a big FIFA guy. Uh, I played 2K basketball from time if i can get my hands on it i never bought it when it was like brand new um mad and i only buy on sale but this college football game man is big it is big in the u.s uh, at least because the last one we had was 2014 for playstation 3 i think it was i think it was playstation 3 and um we haven't had one since due to they stopped. The reason that they stopped making them was due to the using images and likeness of players in college football, but they weren't getting paid for it. That was a big thing at the time. Um, college players were not getting paid for jersey sales or using their name or using their picture or anything. Um, and the colleges were making billions off of this. And their whole argument was, you're an amateur player. You shouldn't get paid. We're we're paying your scholarship to go to school, which is like, I don't know, for an out of state kid, maybe mm-hmm. twenty thousand. But you're paying twenty thousand for me to go to school, but you're making a hundred million off my name. The scales are really, really skewed. Um, there was a few issues in the past yeah. where. Um, I think one guy, he's big on YouTube now. I think his name was like Destroying or something like that. He was a kicker for a, uh, a school in Florida, but he had a YouTube channel and his he had his own YouTube channel and it was just like day in the life of him doing stuff. Nothing crazy, but the YouTube channel was blowing up. He was making money off this YouTube channel. Nothing to do with football, nothing to do with school. And the NCAA the governing body of college sports came down and they were like, Hey, basically you're making this money. Basically the way I seen it, you're making this money from YouTube and we're not getting the cut of that. So with you being a quote unquote amateur player, they gave him an ultimatum to either stop your YouTube channel, stop making money off of this and you can still play football or we're taking your scholarship away and we're kicking you off the team. So he was like, all right, cool. So he quit. He quit the uh, the, the football team. He quit going to college. And now even still, it, it is YouTube channel is blown up even more. He's making crazy money off of it. So I think that was one of the catalysts that really started all this. <laughs> because for years, if you look at like some NF, uh, greats, uh, Reggie Bush, Cam Newton, Honestly, if you can think of any NFL player, 
that's not a that hasn't started playing within the last two to three years. That's like a long time guy, Deion Sanders and all of them guys. Uh, they were never making money from the NCAA. Now people have always been getting paid under the table illegally. That's in every every aspect of the world, but they couldn't make it off their name. Anyways, so there was a big lawsuit, 2014 or 2013 or whatever. So they stopped making the game because on the video game it will be. Let's say Daniel Moxham plays in the game and you're the number, say you're you're a quarterback and you're number 10, right? You play for, I don't know, whatever, the Springboks. Mm-hmm. The Springboks was a college team. But the game would come out. The Springboks would be on the game, your whole jersey, the whole stadium, et cetera, et cetera. But it wouldn't have your name. It would just have a person that looks exactly like you, all your stats, your skills and everything, but instead of your last name on, on your jersey on the game, it will just say QB number 10. So the game was making a shitload of money, but they weren't, but you didn't get anything because it didn't have your name. Everything else about you, your image, likeness, it will have where yeah. you're from, what school you went to, literally everything about you but your name. So end up being a big issue. They stopped making the game. Fast forward to now, uh, now players are getting paid. Uh, now that it's, uh, they've won a court, it's legal to get paid while you're in school. I don't think the school really pays, but you can get like endorsements or whatever. I'm well out of school, so I don't know the finer details of it, but everybody's getting paid now. The game has come out. NCAA said, hey, mm. you know, Daniel, we're going to put you in the game. Uh, it's going to have your name. Well, you can agree or disagree to be in the game. But if you agree, we're going to give you – they gave everybody like a free copy of the game, and they gave you X amount of 100 or or $1,000 to sign your name so we can use your name, image, and likeness. And now the game is out, and it's been blowing up. Uh, people are hyped for it. It's all over my uh, social media. Um, I am planning to get it soon. Uh, since we've been back, I haven't gotten it yet because it hasn't come out for everyone yet. But that probably won't be for me to next week because I'm I got some stuff lined up this week that I don't really have enough time to sit down and play it like I want. But yeah, man, I'm hyped. Sorry about the little bit of a rant about that, but I am hyped for it. Mm-hmm. No, I've I've seen the Instagram reels. It's all over my social media as well. I've even sent uh, your Lucy some some videos, and I'm just like, be careful. It it, it, it could get crazy. <laughs> Um, Nick might just go into <laughs> a bit of a be like take over the lounge, we're like block everyone. <laughs> and she was like, Oh my gosh. And I was like, Just be careful. This game could go haywire right now. Yeah, she, she, she knows. Um, she knows. She, uh, she knows. <laughs> yeah she knows it's nothing gonna be nothing crazy but i told her like when i get this game like i'm focused on this game it's it's been what since 2014 so 10 years it's been 10 years since we've had this and within those 10 years we've missed out on some amazing players that could have been in this game we've missed out on lamar jackson christian mccaffrey derrick henry uh CJ Stroud, Mike, we missed out on some amazing Justin Jefferson, some amazing players that are playing now that we did not get to play with uh, on the video game outside of Madden, which bun Madden, Madden, I think Madden's trash. Um, but yeah, so I am going to be digging into this, but uh, I'm really trying hard not to buy it online, man. I just want to go into a store and get a disc, so. We'll see how that goes. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, um, but going into our uh, expat corner that we did not have when we uh, did our episode thirty car trip, <laughs> uh, uh, one of our discussions, and, and this is something that we've. Both of it have experienced. Daniel might be still experiencing a bit. Uh, is living abroad for <laughs> X amount of years. You get used to 
living abroad, we've talked about it before. You, your mind opens up a bit. You see things differently. A lot of the walls that you built around you when you were in your own bubble of your own safety of your own home are starting to like break down and you see more things. You understand more. You, you, you have a more tolerance for people because you understand that everyone's from somewhere different. Uh, after you get it, after you get that, when you go back home and you've changed, everyone else has not changed. And that can be a bit of an issue, mm-hmm. a bit of a internal struggle uh, dealing with people. Uh, I'm going to let Daniel expand on that uh, with, with safety, if possible. <laughs> yeah, I think um, when you... What, what's it called again? Ah, oh, there's a specific word for it. It's called like reverse culture shock. It's re- so yeah, yeah, yeah. I think when when you go through when you go through reverse culture shock, it's it's not that you're not used to your own culture. It's not that you used to your own life, but you've built somewhat of an independence that is not dependent on the people back home. So. Like I got to admit, when I went back to South Africa, that was that was okay. It was okay to go back to South Africa, but when you when you and you know I, I flew to South Africa, we we hired a car, and you're pretty much still kind of independent. So even when you're traveling, even if you are abroad and you travel, so for instance, if I went from China to Seoul, visit my friend, you know I I search online where I'm going, how am I doing it, and you're pretty much like. For the last five or six years, I've been traveling a lot by train, subways, planes, and a little bit of by car. So you generally just take public transport and go if it's possible in those places. But certain times you come to certain places and you kind of like, ah, I'm kind of stuck here and I'm dependent on this person. In in a way that, you know, like you kind of need them. So like when I was visiting my dad, I had my own car. So I didn't need like my dad to take me here or anything like that. But I also think like reverse culture shock is like also the fact that the people that you've left behind, their problems remain the same. Their their likes remain the same. They haven't changed as much. And I'm not saying like, oh, wow, you don't haven't changed. No, you have changed in a different way. But when you've gone on and lived abroad, your change is a lot more dramatic, a lot more drastic changes go in your life because, like Nick said, you've broken down so many walls. So for me, it's like, you know, driving and then there's like you're in a mall and and like your family member says, oh, wow, there's so many people in this mall. And you look around, you're like, this is not a lot of people. And, And sometimes you forget that you've come from China where... There's literally millions of people around you and you've just grown accustomed to it and they're not accustomed to it as it is. But I think also the reverse culture shock can also think that it can play both ways where people still think you're the same person. So like they don't think that you can do this now when you couldn't do it when you're at home, but now you're like, Oh, I I don't really need to do this. I just do that. So You've also changed, and some people might think you come home and they're like, "Oh, you still buddy," and they will tell you things, and you'd be like, "But, but I know that," you know, like it can and it can peeve you off in the wrong way, and it's not like they don't love you or they hate you or whatever, or like, "Oh, wow, this person's changed; they, they, the ugly person." I think it's just that they still see the person that was there five, six, eight, ten years ago. And they still perceive you as this person that was like, oh, they're my, they're my brother, they're my son, they're my uncle, they're my daughter, they're my whatever. And they still need me in this way. When you actually don't anymore, you've kind of been like, well, I've been away for five, six years. I don't need this. I can just get up and go, you know. So, so certain things. And I think it's like, and it's a battle because you're like, people stay, have this perceived image of you and you've come and you've changed and it doesn't happen a lot it doesn't happen often um so and i think for some people it's like you know like for me if you if you speak to nick i just get up and do things 
I don't really rely yeah. on other people to do things because in China, I lead that type of lifestyle. I just get up and go. Like if I want to go to the gym here in Spain, I research the closest gym. I see how much money it is. And I just find the location on my phone and I drive to it. And yes, I haven't, I don't normally drive on the right side of the road. So they're like, like some people might think that, oh no, you can't drive on the right hand side of the road because you've never done it. Well, when am I going to drive on the right hand side of the road? Now, because it's an opportunity to learn. And you know, like I might drive on the left hand side of the road and my license comes from South Africa and I'm very accustomed to driving on the left side of the road, but I've lived in China for five or six years. And I've seen people drive on the right side. So it's becoming a little bit more natural. Not me behind the steering wheel, but the the shock of it. I'm kind of like, oh, this is not. And I think some people will say, oh, you can't do this. You've never done it before. Well, I never flew to Korea before and took a train and the subway, you know? Like when I arrived in Madrid, I was like, okay, cool. My first thing is... Um, and, I, and, I, and I think a lot of people, and I think a lot of the older generation... And I think some people that don't travel very often would be like airport, taxi, hotel. That's like standard. And it can get very pricey. But for me now, I don't want to take a taxi from anywhere that has a subway or a metro. If I'm arriving at an airport and that airport has a metro, I'm like, if I'm in no rush, if I'm no time constraints and the subway is 20 minutes slower than the taxi, I'm taking the subway because it's four euros versus 30 euros if you know what i mean so mm -hmm. and i think that just comes down to research and i think when like for instance when you're at home you're not doing as much research as an expat so and i can and i can and i can tell you now when you are going when you're in china you can't just phone someone and tell them what you want to do you've got to research it because they obviously don't understand you and you just research and translate and you kind of like, okay, cool. If I'm going to go here, this is how I'm doing it. And I think that some people forget that you become a lot more independent when you travel by yourself or travel with one or two people being an expat. And I think your independent level goes really skyrocketing compared to what, what you were back home. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's not saying that the people back home aren't independent. They're just independent in a different way. And I think that that becomes a, a massive reverse culture shock. And it can kind of like hurt relationships with friends and family for sure. And in my particular case, for me, I've never really, and I'll be quite honest with you guys. I think from, from the age of 13, when I went to boarding school, I haven't lived with my parents more than like three weeks in the same place. So like, it becomes like, well, I don't need this parenting stuff all the time, you know, because I mean, obviously you need your parents and you love your parents, but like, I used to live on the farm with my dad when I was working in, in, in Johannesburg and I barely even saw him on the farm because, you know, just take my car and drive, just take my car and drive, you know, because that's what you would do. But yeah, so I think that when people come home, there's a re reverse culture shock of you not being used to things. But people being not used to how you've changed and treating you like the same old person. And that could be like frustrating. But also, just a heads up, it can happen. Because you can go home and be like, yo, I'm going to go here quickly, guys. Whoa, 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 where are you going? What are you doing? And you'd be like, well, I'm just going to jump in the car or I'm just going to catch the bus. And people would just be like, what, the f what, what are you doing? And it just becomes this, a slight difference of how people might treat you. They might be treating you the same as you were. And you've forgotten how you were treated because you've obviously become independent. But yeah, that's just a bit of bit of reverse cultural shock and a bit of a reverse relationship shock as well with friends and family that, you know, this is the way. This is how things have changed. And I think that could get get frustrating at times, but also you become like, you know what? You've just got after a two or three days, you just be like, yeah, cool. You say what you want to say. I'm, I'm not living here. I'm not moving in. And you're going to be gone soon. Just enjoy the time that you have with them and see if they could, you know, just be like, hey, yo, I, I, I got this. I can do it. And eventually people will be like, oh, this person's pretty, 
pretty independent. They're going to do their own thing. They've changed in their different way. And we all simply move on. Yeah. Uh, regard, if that makes sense. I agree with, as far as the transportation, I agree with the planes, ta- uh, taxis, trains. I do not agree with the buses. I do not deal with buses at all. Uh, I hate buses. <laughs> I, 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 I grew up growing up back home. I had to ride the bus a lot uh, to uh, a job that I used to have uh, a job in high school. I used to have, I used to have to ride the bus, the city bus uh, my first six months out of college and I was working. I had to ride a bus. I didn't have a car yet. Uh, granted, these are like city inner city buses. So the people on the bus are always weird and sketchy. And sometimes it was hot. And then I didn't ride a bus again until my first time in Shenyang. Uh, one of our liaison lady or whatever <laughs> put me on a bus to my first job in China. I had fuck all idea where I was even at. I only been I ain't even been in China a month, and I haven't been in this city <laughs> in two days. And she put me on this random bus with, and I'm just like. Ah. Everybody's staring at me. I'm the only non-Chinese person on this bus. It was hot. I had no idea where I was going. Didn't know where to get off. I, long story short, I don't do buses. I will do a taxi if need be. uh, (laughs) Or I try to stay away from like the Ubers and stuff because I know they're expensive. I only do it if I'm already like, if I'm too tired or it's too hot or whatever. I got an excuse. Uh, But I'm the same. I will ride a subway or train anywhere. That's fine. Buses I don't do. Can't do them. But, um, but yeah, like you said, well, you, you well really buses ain't... are, is, is a bit different. Buses are different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before, before um, you bash buses, before you bash buses, I, 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 I agree with buses in, in a sense of like, they are difficult to travel because they take so many routes. And China's bus system is very, very difficult to understand. And I think in the five years of living in China, five, six years living in China, I've ridden the bus once. And that was with Chinese people from my school because it was snowing and we had no other means of transport. So that's why I'll only use subways and and DDs because of the affordability in Shenyang. But like, for instance, when I was in Mallorca last year, they only had buses to different parts of the place. And buses were a lot more cheaper than like a taxi because like, and in there, it was like simple. Follow this bus to the site. And it was very operational. So in certain towns, buses could work in your favor. But yeah, once you've, if you've ridden the Chinese bus systems, I know there's a few people that use it. It's quite crazy. But I do agree with Nick on that sense. Just don't do buses. If you can avoid them, avoid them because you can get lost. Yeah. Uh, now, I will ride a bus like when I've gone into like a certain city. And they have a bus from like the air. This mic. They have a bus from like the airport to the hotel or somewhere like that. If I have a bus from one location to a, lo- or if it's like a bus from this location to this sightseeing thing, that's fine. Those are like pretty much tourist buses for the most part, like a coach bus. But like the city buses, I'm 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 done. No, I can't. I can't, bro. I can't. But I think when I go to Paris, though. Because when I get when I get to Paris, I'm gonna get the um, the train from the uh, airport to the train station Saint Ambrose, but it's like a block away from our Airbnb, so I'm gonna just walk to the Airbnb. But um, I think for the Olympics, they're having an Olympic bus set up as well. So, but like I said, that's cool. It's, it's an event bus, you know, it's doing that kind of thing. But the nice. normal inner city bus, man, it's a specific nah. bus. <laughs> uh disclaimer alert before we wrap up here and do our dad jokes uh disclaimer alert um nick can't float so it's official i've checked it out uh, for all our viewers and listeners nick can't float he this man this man either panics he just panics um it's not like he he wants to panic but like you hold him, and I think Vicky's done. I think Lucy's done. When you hold him at the back, this man just goes down, and you're like, "Why are you going down? Stop going down!" 
But um, yeah, he's he doesn't he doesn't float. Like I mean, I was like, just go down in the water, just push yourself down in the water, and you will just come up. Man didn't come up, so I was like, okay, cool, no, all right. And there is no way to float. There's no technique. There's no special way of like floating. Like, oh, do this, no, no. So yeah, so just to slam out there before we move on to the dad jokes, Nick can't float in the sea or the swimming pool. So yeah, I, I see. I, I, and I've been tr- I've been trying to tell you all. I've been trying to say it. No one, no one. That's the thing. The kicker is no one ever believes me. So the first time I told Lucy this, she said the same thing. <laughs> that's that's bullshit. You're lying. We go to the pool. I've been to the pool in many seas with Lucy. We go in there. Oh, he don't float. Then we went with Vicky and, and Vicky. I was like, Vicky, I don't float. And Lucy's like, no, Vicky, he don't float. Vicky said the same thing. That's bullshit. We're going to go to the pool. We're going to go to the sea, whatever, whatever. He's going to float. We get into the pool. We get into the sea. Vicky's like, damn, he don't float. I told you. Uh, I think our friend Shannon Shawnee, we got into a <laughs> pool or a beach. Didn't believe me. Got in. Oh, he don't float. I've been telling Daniel, I don't float. Him and his mom were looking up stuff online. He floats, you know. We found something that, like, apparently black people float less because of, like, was it bone density or something like that? <laughs> yeah, bone, um, bone structure density. Yeah. And we get that. And I was like, I don't float. And I, I, I start, when he says I panic, it's not like I start freaking out. It's just like I put my legs straight and I tuck my butt, do whatever I got to do. But I could just feel myself immediately going down, like not floating. I know I'm going down. So they was like, all right, fuck it. I just stand up. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's why my bucket list, if anyone, want, if anyone wants to uh, <laughs> donate some money to a trip for me uh, to the Dead Sea, uh, the, a bucket list of mine is to go to the Dead Sea and float. I want to get into that salty ass water and I want to float. This this man's going to be the first person to sink in the Dead Sea. <laughs> <laughs> there, ain't, there ain't no amount of salt that's going to float your ass up there, my friend. There ain't no salt that's going to make your ass float, that's for sure. You're going to be in the newspaper. <laughs> Nick, the first man to sink in the Dead Sea, man's going to find... Man's gonna find treasure that nobody could find. <laughs> down there in the <laughs> if I sink in the Dead Sea, yeah, I think that's I think that's gonna make international news. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have to be there to record this. I'm gonna be like, watch him sink. I'm sinking. He's going down. Chick is all floating on the top. Nick go down. Imagine, yeah, Nick Nick drowned. <laughs> Where did he drown at? In the Dead Sea. Wait, the sea that's full of salt and everything floats? Yeah, he still drowned. <laughs> <laughs> Where's he at? Yeah, he's, he's at the bottom. Can't nobody get down there because no one else sinks. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. So, if anyone wants to take me up on that offer, uh, if anyone wants to take me up on that offer to... Uh, I'm, I'm going to start charging people, people that don't believe me that I don't float. I'm going to be like, all right, I need 100 pounds. We go to the nearest <laughs> pool, pool Just or sea or whatever of your choice. <laughs> let's let's find out. If I float, you get your money back. <laughs> and then, yeah, we're going to have to do yeah, a trip. I don't even know where the Dead Sea is, first of all. I should probably find that out. Where is the Dead Sea? Let's look on the internet. Dead Sea. The Dead Sea is in Asia. And the Dead Sea is known as other. It's a landlocked salt lake bordered by Jordan to the east and the Israel occupied West Bank and Israel to the west. So it's not far from Jerusalem. Okay. Okay. Well, it uh, is technically in Jerusalem. Yeah. So yeah, it is. Yeah, if I'm looking at the map, yeah, it is basically you can. Yeah, you can get. I think you would get into the Dead Sea by Jordan. 
Okay. I'm going to have to so look into Jordan, it. Uh, uh, I'm not a mum, but yeah. Yeah. All right. That is the Salt Lake. In, uh, so it's a Salt Lake. So is it... Is it okay to swim in the Dead Sea? No matter what time of year you choose to visit the Dead Sea, it's important to remember that swimming in its waters can be dangerous due mm-hmm. to its high salt content and strong currents. Visitors must take safety precautions, such as wearing a life jacket or using a flotation device when swimming in these waters. Wait, what? I, I, was, I was always under the impression that like you can't get in there. Like, apparently, you can't stay in the Dead Sea for a long yeah. time, though. Yeah. Can you float on the Dead Sea? The Dead Sea is very buoyant due to its high salt content, so it's easy to float on the water without much effort. However, stay calm and try to swim too fast or too far out into deeper waters because you could quickly lose control and get lost in its vastness. Ah. All right, so there's a few. There's a few tips. But yeah, we're going to go to the Dead Sea and watch you sink. All right, I'm down. Have I'm you got look, your dad joke up. ready, sir? Yes, I do. I do. All right. You want to go first, sir? Uh, Yeah, hold on. Let me get it up. Hold on. Uh, for the people who see on camera, this is the phone case. Daniel got me. Boom. Look at that. That's some sexy shit right there. I actually bought it. There's proof. There's proof that I got it. There's proof that I got his phone case for him. All right, I, I, I got, I got, I got two. I got two dad jokes. Are you ready? Are you going to go first, or you go first? You go first. There's a lag, so I don't know if you said me or you. There's a lag. Are you going to go first or am I going to go first? I can go first. Are you ready? Then go first. I'm waiting for you patiently. (laughs) Yes. All right. uh, So I'm starting a business to teach short people math. Uh, it's going to be called Making the Little Things Count. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that okay. was terrible. <laughs> that was a good one. I don't even think I reacted. All right, mm. your turn. Let's go. You've Let's go. I, be, I better. Are you I ready for mine? Chuckle. I better chuckle. Let's go. <laughs> I caught my son chewing on electrical cords, so I had to ground him. He's doing much better currently, and now conducting himself properly. Science jokes aren't working. This guy, this guy put on his <laughs> his true face to, to not laugh. So that, <laughs> so that I got back. Okay, I see. There we go. There's your chuckle. Uh, my There's last one is. Uh, There's the chuckle. See, I got a chuckle. Ready? See, I got a chuckle. That's because you you just because you were sad that it wasn't funny. I was laughing at you, not with you. I'm ready. (laughs) All right. My girlfriend keeps accusing me of cheating. She's uh, starting to sound a lot like my wife. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was a good one. Thank you. You got one more for me? 
All right, I got my second one. I got one more for you, sir. Go. I didn't think I was fat. So the woman in McDonald's said, sorry about your weight. So you're just stupid. Slight chuckle. <laughs> Got a slight chuckle there. A slight <laughs> chuckle. All right. All Got right, it there. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. Beyond these, beyond these terrible delays that we've had in episode 30, Point five. It must be that rural internet. It must be that because my internet in China, my internet in Spain, it must be, I think Nick's the common problem here because I've moved fucking location and country. So <laughs> maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it might be, to be honest with you. I might need to look into that. <laughs> so, yeah, but, uh, but yep. That is the All end right. of that episode 30.5. 30. <laughs> you go ahead and finish. Patties. We're talking over each other now. <laughs> <laughs> we will see you soon. Am I finishing? <laughs> All right. Peace out, Patties. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys keep safe. And um, yeah enjoy if you're on holiday enjoy the holidays if you're traveling be safe don't forget insurance and just yeah be you be you peace out bye bye